Today, I am getting the COVID vaccine. It's probably really crazy that I am getting excited about getting a vaccine. If you're new to my videos, my name is Matt, and usually I'm getting excited about traveling the world and having adventures in unusual places. But fact is that vaccines are the only way that the world is going to get over this whole coronavirus pandemic and that includes travel. So I rather selfishly do want those benefits for myself, but I also really think that it is our responsibility to society to take the vaccine as soon as it is offered to us. My appointment is at lunchtime, so I'm gonna head to work first and I will see you guys later. It's generally a good idea when you get any vaccination, not just this COVID vaccine, to not go on an empty stomach and to stay hydrated. Especially if you have any fear or problems with vaccines or needles, uh, which I actually don't, but I just want to give myself the best chance of feeling good after the vaccine. Uh, I should say that the COVID vaccine I'm getting today is the BioNTech vaccine, which in most places around the world is known as the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine. Here in Hong Kong, we're so, so lucky that not only are we getting the vaccine so soon, but we even have a choice of one of the two vaccines on offer, the other one being the Sinovac vaccine. So I will talk later in this video about all the stuff I've looked into about the vaccine, but I have no issues about the safety. I'm very comfortable getting it. So here I go, off to get my COVID vaccine. I got the vaccine. Unfortunately, they would not allow any filming or photos in the hospital, which is, of course, fair enough. The whole thing was super efficient, as you might expect, of Hong Kong. The one thing to bear in mind if you are going for your own vaccination as well, and well done for that, then just make sure that you are wearing a proper surgical face mask. Uh, rainbows and unicorns are optional. Uh, the vaccine itself, the needle was actually super, super thin. It was probably like the thinnest needle I've ever had with a vaccination. I swear that actually some mosquito bites actually hurt more than that. So if that's your concern, then I really don't think there's very much to be worried about. And after they gave us the vaccination, then we were asked to sit in a group waiting room. We had to wait for 15 to 30 minutes so that they could make sure that nobody had any adverse reactions. As for any side effects, um, I think there's like a tiniest, tiniest bit of soreness. I would definitely get more sore if I had a proper workout at the gym or something like that anyway. Um, they do say that the side effects tend to be stronger and more pronounced after the second dose, which is how these vaccines are meant to work. On that note, the BioNTech vaccine, like most COVID vaccines, are given out as two doses. So I've got my second dose scheduled in in 21 days. It's actually been two days since I got the vaccine and still the only side effect that I've had is that soreness in my arm. Yesterday when it was at its worst, it felt like somebody had punched me in the arm. But even today, two days afterwards, I think the soreness is mostly gone. So I didn't have any fever, I didn't have any headaches. Uh, I might have been a little bit more tired than usual, but it's quite hard to say. One thing that did happen the night after I got the vaccine was I woke up in the middle of the night. Now that could have simply been because the soreness in my arm disturbed my sleep. But actually, I think much more likely was the fact that I went to bed that night really quite annoyed. So that evening, after I got the vaccine, I posted on my Instagram saying that I got the vaccine and it is very safe. People should take the vaccine as soon as they can because we really need to get out of this coronavirus pandemic. And you have heard me at the start of the video, that is a message I absolutely do stand by. And most of the reactions from my Instagram posts were really, really positive, uh, especially a whole bunch of people, some of my followers in the US and UK had gotten the vaccines themselves. 
Then I got this really long ranting message from this person who follows me, but I don't know them personally, going on and on about how could I say the vaccine is safe, it's apparently unapproved, uh, it doesn't actually provide immunity, and this one is probably the bit that is most laughable. The efficacy is actually 0.8%, not 95%, which, you know, when I receive messages like this, I would probably have just binned it, maybe unfollowed this person, and not really cared too much. But what made me stop and think was the fact that in his Instagram name, he says doctor. And he also follows that up by saying he's a healthcare practitioner that has been researching vaccines his entire career. So he'd like to think he knows what he's talking about. So me being me, first thing I do is plug his name into Google to find out exactly what kind of doctor he is. Oh, he's a chiropractor. No offense to chiropractors, and I myself have had plenty of chiropractic treatment, which has been really, really helpful. But give me a break. You are not a vaccine researcher and you are not a medical doctor. The problem with people like this is not so much the fact that they are questioning facts and experts. I used to be an auditor for many, many years. I find it second nature to question anything anyone tells me, which is why I am questioning this bullshit. Excuse my French, but it really is bullshit. So um, I'm not going to go through all of its allegations, but something as simple as the efficacy rate of 95%. I have looked into the data myself. The 95% was absolutely correct in those trials. And not just me, I'm not a vaccine expert or anything like this, but this data has been studied by so many people around the world from different countries, all sorts of organizations, that 95% is absolutely correct. Not only that, and this also comes back to the point about how I can say that vaccines are safe and I'm very, very comfortable with them, is the fact that they've already been rolled out into so many places. So as of the end of February, over half the population of Israel has been vaccinated with this particular vaccine, the BioNTech one. In the US, over 40 million people have had this particular vaccine. Uh, the UK has been using it since December. So not only are we seeing that the vaccine is very safe, but in real world use, the vaccine has also been very, very effective. <sighs> so if you're watching this video, I hope that you know, you don't even take my word for it. You know, don't take pe random people on Instagram who say they're doctors or researchers or whatever it is. Don't take their word for it. Either go and take real researchers who really know what they're talking about. And by the way, the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine that I'm talking about has already been approved for use in 68 countries. Why in the world would these countries approve a vaccine that is not effective and pay for it. You know, this thing is not being given out free. And why in the world would they want to use a vaccine that is not effective? I've just had my second dose of the COVID vaccine and just like the last time, it was really quick, efficient and painless. This time I've come to the Sun Yat-sen Memorial Sports Center which is set up a little bit more like a production line compared to the St. Paul's Hospital that I was in. So at each section, people were made to queue. The queues did clear very quickly. So before I knew it, I was into the hall and ready to get my vaccination. The vaccine itself, once again, it was really, really painless. The needle really was like the smallest, thinnest needle ever. And then afterwards, once again, they made us wait around for 15 minutes just to monitor us for any adverse reactions. Now if you don't take vaccinations very often then maybe you're wondering why with this COVID vaccine they're asking us to wait around and be monitored but actually this is something quite common with a lot of vaccines. I take the flu vaccination quite regularly most years I will take it and that's also something that they ask us to do so not something new at all to the COVID vaccine. Right now, uh, you know, it's barely been an hour since I got the vaccine. I don't have any side effects. I suspect that sore arm that I had from the first time is going to come back. And many people say that the second dose does trigger some stronger side effects, which, you know, is how the vaccine is designed to work. 
So uh, let's see how that goes over the next few days and um, I'll keep you posted. So far, the only side effect which I've had is the sore arm thing. At uh, this point in time, it feels very, very similar to the day after the first dose. So the sore arm thing does seem to have come on sooner and maybe a little bit stronger than during the first dose, which is something that they tell you to expect, that the second dose does trigger a stronger response. So not altogether surprising. I did go into work all of this afternoon and what did surprise me was I was expecting to feel tired but instead I felt much more energetic than usual and this lasted for most of the afternoon until I came back home about an hour ago then I lay on the couch and started yawning so maybe the fatigue is setting in uh, I do feel like there's something happening on the edges of my awareness can't quite pinpoint it so maybe some other side effects will also set in or maybe they won't but yeah let's see how it goes the rest of this evening <sighs> I'm ready for bed but my arm is absolutely killing me now uh, it's definitely more painful than it was at any point after the first dose and if you check this out this is my range of motion on the vaccinated side and on my non-vaccinated side, this is more like my normal range of motion, which is like 90 degrees. Also, my back is killing me. At first, I thought it was just some uh, effect from the handstand practice I was doing yesterday. But it really is on the vaccinated side and it's getting more painful on the vaccinated side. Uh, so I guess I'm going to have to try to sleep through this. I am not a big fan of painkillers at all. so. I'm gonna try to go to sleep without any painkillers. I think I might take a little bit of melatonin just to help me fall asleep. So wish me luck and I'll let you know how that goes tomorrow. Sleep was pretty terrible. I uh, woke up around four in the morning and then couldn't go back to sleep for at least a couple of hours. The uh, pain in my arm, the pain in my back. It, it really feels like I've pulled my back. Uh, got worse at that point. I think it's now gotten a little bit better. Um, I think the motion of my arm actually is more than when I went to bed, so that's a good positive thing, I hope. And the other thing which was then bugging me when I woke up is that I started having a wisdom tooth issue a couple of days ago, so this is before I took the vaccine. But it's just a bad coincidence that I've now got aches all over my body so it feels a bit like I, I don't run marathons but imagine I did run a marathon and pushed myself beyond the limits of my body and then now the next day my body is hurting because of it so um, you know if you've ever done something like that then it's actually okay you realize that your body will recover and I'm very very comfortable that that will be the case but that's just Got to give my body time. I've actually taken today to work from home. I'm going to take it really, really nice and easy. Uh, just give my body a chance to rest and relax, which I think was a really, really good decision. Today has been exhausting. After lunch, I closed my eyes and then the next thing I know, I've fallen asleep for over two hours. And then even after I woke up, I was still feeling really drained. I was kind of disoriented, really groggy. Um, yeah, then as the day went on, however, and now that it's nighttime, I do actually feel much, much better. Even my arm, which was hurting like crazy this morning, this afternoon, it's much better now. I've almost got my full range of motion, not quite. And uh, I'm very hopeful that I am over the worst of it. My side effects lasted for about three days and then they went away completely. Now, judging by what others have told me, then I think my side effects that I experienced were about middle of the range because I've had some friends who felt almost nothing after both doses. And then I've had others who've had things like fevers and headaches, which did also go away a few days after the vaccine. So if you've also had the COVID-19 vaccine, then I would love to hear what your experience was like. So do leave me a comment and let me know. 
Now, regardless what you think about the side effects, then I hope that you realize that the symptoms and the actual effects of COVID-19 are far, far worse than any of these side effects that you could get. Now, I have had friends who have actually had COVID-19, uh, including one friend who's like me, you know, under the age of 40, who up until now, nearly a year later, still does not have his sense of taste and smell. Now, for somebody like me who loves food so, so much, then uh, that would be absolutely horrible. I just really can't imagine living without my sense of taste or smell. And it is the thing that I think that people do struggle to appreciate. There is no such thing as no risk. When you do something, quite often there is a risk. And when you don't do something, there is also a risk attached to it. Now, if you are struggling to think about this concept, then let me tell you a story. Imagine that you're flying in an airplane. Remember those things? In fact, imagine that you're the pilot of this airplane and you're approaching the airport about to land and you've put down the landing gear, but for some reason you've got this niggle in the back of your head that the landing gear is not properly down. All your instruments and all your computers tell you that the landing gear is fine, but there's still that doubt in the back of your head that there's some risk with this landing gear. So you keep trying to figure out what may be wrong with this landing gear. You keep circling the airport 30 minutes, 60 minutes later, while your co-pilot keeps telling you that, look, your fuel is running out. You really, really need to land. We cannot go on like this. But now you're obsessed with finding out this potential problem with the landing gear. Your entire thing is about the landing gear. This was the true story of United Airlines Flight 173 and I think it really helps to illustrate what happens when we get obsessed with small potential tiny risks and really miss the bigger picture, the big issue that's staring us right in the face. Now, if you're living somewhere like Hong Kong, then maybe you're thinking, oh, we've done pretty well through this whole COVID-19 pandemic with all these measures that we've had. Maybe you're not even interested in traveling or other people being able to travel. Okay, fair enough. But then think about even with these things like face masks everywhere, you know, two people public gathering. I've just had to do a 21 day hotel quarantine, shipping people off to quarantine camp. Even with all of these measures, we still are getting outbreaks every so often. And think about how quickly those outbreaks start, how quickly they go on and suddenly everyone's back into panic mode. All these other measures are not foolproof. They're not the answer. And we can't go on living life like this. We are fast running out of fuel and we are going to crash and burn if we all don't take an active part in doing something real about this. So if you are still hesitating about taking the vaccine, then I hope that in some parts this video has helped you feel more comfortable about taking it or you know at least given you more information to think about. Now of course please don't take this as medical advice. If you do have any specific concerns or issues then do please consult your doctor and I do mean a doctor of medicine. I will leave more information about the things I've talked about in a pinned comment so do check out the comment section and also leave me a comment. Let me know what you are thinking. I will leave you with this thought, which is what I started the video with. Vaccines are the only way that we, and I do mean the whole world, is going to get out of this mess, this whole coronavirus pandemic. So let's all do our parts and bring the world back to a happier place.